All right, all right. We're back for another episode of the YVR Remo Show, and it's been a bit of a break here, so this is our first episode back. Uh, we had a bit of a two-week break, and we're looking forward to jump back into a topic that has been certainly top of mind for a, for us, and and we've been getting a you know not not only a lot of requests for this type of a product and and, and strategy, but ultimately it's just making a lot of sense for people that you know may not even know that they that they could benefit from a strategy like this and and so where i'm getting at is we are going to talk about when does it make sense to take a second mortgage uh second mortgages can have you know a bit of a yeah a negative connotation to it and, and we're going to certainly break down the you know the fact that that's certainly not the case um, you know whether it's a you know a private lender providing a second mortgage uh your bank providing a mortgage in, in second position behind their your current mortgage or even just a, a home equity line of credit. Um, there's there's many cases where a second charge uh, would be construed as a second mortgage and we're going to break that down. Yeah, Greg, I, I think you kind of hit on it, right? Like there's a bit of a stigma with second mortgages. If, if people hear it and just kind of immediately think negative thoughts, but you know, there's different ways to think about it. And, and also a second mortgage doesn't necessarily need to be you don't need to immediately think of like private lending equity lending high rates fees all that depending on which bank you're in which or credit union whatever lending institution you're with quite often they offer second mortgage products that are priced just the same as first mortgage products right so it can it can almost be looked at like an extension of your existing mortgage almost like a refinance well it is a refinance in a way so there's there's certainly different tiers, much like first mortgage lending. We've got three different tiers of second mortgage lending. We've got your AAA banks or, or AAA lenders, which would be your major banks and your credit unions or mortgage finance company partners. Uh, you've also got sort of the B side, we call it, um, you know, where there's going to be alternative lenders. They offer products like a home equity line of credit, much like a, a major bank would. And then all the way down at the end of the line, sort of the third tier is sort of your private lending and equity lending solutions. You know, each of those products serve their own purpose and may help the you know the right person at the right time for the right reason. So, you know, we say all that to say there are times and situations where it does make sense to take on a second mortgage, where it can be a financially sound decision, and we'll just break down a few of those uh, for you guys here. Yeah, I mean, just to talk a, about what, typically like some of the reasons why someone would would take on a second mortgage instead of doing a new first mortgage, just to kind of break that down. Uh, often what you might see is like if someone has a, a good competitive rate on their first mortgage, right? Say someone owes $500,000, they have a fixed rate at 2.9%. Well, if rates are higher right now, it doesn't make any sense typically to break that mortgage, pay a penalty, lose that rate, and then take on a whole new larger mortgage at current rates, which are more expensive, right? So that's like right now is a very common situation. So you're always trying to preserve that first mortgage if you have something competitive. Um, so that is typically where a second mortgage would be triggered. Um, just another just clarity piece. Like a lot of people seem to think that like a home equity line of credit, a HELOC is this amazing product and a second mortgage is this bad thing. Like it's the exact same thing. You're, you're just leveraging your equity in second position behind your first mortgage. And to be honest with you, well, it's getting a little bit closer now, but interest rates on second mortgages like conventional second mortgages have actually been a lot cheaper than a HELOC rate for the last probably six to 12 months. Right. So, um, you got to look at the cost, but it's, it's a very similar, um, kind of structure. It's just the HELOC operates differently than a mortgage. Um, but anyways, that's one reason why someone would be going for a second mortgage instead of doing a full new first mortgage. And then the other is if someone actually doesn't qualify anymore, this is a, we've seen a ton of this, right? Like rates have gone up quite a bit. Maybe someone's income situation has changed, whatever it might be. Maybe someone's racked up debt and they just don't qualify anymore. Those are situations where you're looking at going, okay, well, I can't get financing from a bank anywhere because I don't income qualify or I don't credit qualify, whatever the reason is. And that's where the private second mortgage or potentially B lending second mortgage would come into place. You leave your first mortgage, I, you know, typically with a conventional lender, leave it as, as is, don't change anything. And then you're placing a, a non-income qualified second mortgage in behind to consolidate debt or what have you. So we'll, we'll dig into some of the reasons now if one of you guys want to take that. But I just wanted to give some clarity as to why why you might see someone taking a second mortgage instead of a new first. I mean, debt consolidation is 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 a big one right now. And for the main reason of just the cost of interest on a lot of these 
these products that people seem to rack up debt on, which would be credit cards, a line of credit accounts. I mean, we're seeing credit cards come in with an average rate of 19 to 22%. That's very common. Um, almost every credit card should be carrying around a, an interest rate of 19.99%. And, you know, if you have, let's say, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 of debt sitting on an account like that, and there's an opportunity to roll that into a second mortgage in a, in a rate of say 10%. And that also preserves, you know, maybe a 2.59 fixed rate that you have with your first mortgage. I mean, it, the numbers start to make a lot of sense at, in, in really quickly. And, and it can be a significant amount of savings. And we're seeing, we're seeing that type of a strategy quite regularly. And, and the reason why we would go to let's say a private lender or an equity based lender at 10% opposed to your current bank at maybe six to 7% would just be because of a qualification concern. Um, given the fact that the stress test rates, you know, from on a qualification perspective are, are far higher now than, you know, than they were in the past, given where rates are at today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if we just think about what's a financially savvy, you know, maneuver swapping, Debt that's nineteen to twenty percent for ten percent just it, it, it just makes sense, right? So, um, you know, a lot of the second mortgage products too, they're going to come with, especially if we're looking at line of credit or, or more alternative or, or private end. Uh, there are a lot of open terms available as well, so they're always open for repayment. I mean, we'll we'll get into the important things to keep in mind with the second, uh, kind of towards the end of the podcast, I think, but. Um, you know, with an effective exit strategy, if you know you're having funds coming up or opportunity to refinance, you know, in the, in the future, uh, they're very flexible products quite often. So you can pay them out uh, as quickly or fast as, as, as you're able to. Uh, I'll just quickly touch on, you know, what Derek already mentioned as well, and, and something I would consider why second mortgage would make sense is just to maximize the value of that you know, amazing fixed rate you might have that you booked in the last two years, right? If you're sitting at one and a half, two, two and a half, three percent uh, to reborrow at the rate that's most likely double, uh, probably doesn't make sense. And if you're working with a competent mortgage professional, they can sort of work out a blended rate for you and say, okay, if we keep this two percent fixed rate and we take this ten percent, you know, small second, here's what your Brent blended rate looks like. And maybe that falls at, you know, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, for example. That's still going to be vastly cheaper than what you would get on the open market today for a first mortgage, especially once you factor in the penalty to break that first mortgage if your existing lender couldn't help you. Um, so that kind of captures those two pieces. I don't know, Derek, if you want to talk about lines of credit a little bit for, a little bit further. or Yeah. And, and funny enough, lines of credit are actually offered um, – through all channels of lending, they get a little bit more restrictive as not, not as many options when you get into B and private lending, but there are home equity line of credit products in all of those, A, B and private. Um, essentially how it works, like I think a HELOC's a great product if someone might not have an immediate use for the funds, just because it's you're only paying interest on the amount that you've drawn, right? So it's like, it's a great product for someone that's doing a renovation as an example, right? You're pulling out 5,000 a week or 10,000 a week as you're paying your contractor, and then once your renovation is complete, you can look at converting that into a mortgage potentially at a lower rate. But it's just a really good safety net product. And this is something like we talk about this all the time. Um, if anyone's going through a refinance or a purchase, any sort of a real estate transaction that has a mortgage tied in or not, if you qualify for a line of credit in addition to the financing that you actually need, you should take it. Like the only reason that you shouldn't is if you have a spending problem and that's just the truth. Like if you think that you're going to just rack that line of credit up on, on, you know, useless uh, purchases then I wouldn't, but it's a great safety net. I mean, we've seen situations where maybe an investment opportunity comes up and you have access, right? Especially if you qualify at that point, like think about people that are going into retirement. This is what we talk about this all the time. If you think you're going to be retiring in the next two, three years, like you should 100% get access to as much of your equity as possible through a line of credit in case you need it to gift it to your kids, right? To invest in something, whatever the situation might be. Um, but it's a really flexible product. It's an open product, so there's no penalties, right? You could rack it up, pay it all off the very next day, and there's zero penalties to the institution. Plus you have access to it as long as you have uh, your financing held with that institution. Same thing on the private side, this is rare, and there's only a couple private lenders that actually offer the line of credit, but it works in the exact same fashion. Right. If you only need to borrow fifty thousand today, but you have enough equity and qualify for two hundred thousand, 
you might decide to take that. And if you do need more in the future, you have access to it, right? Of course, you're going to be paying interest and fees and everything else. Um, but a really good flexible product, I would say that's hands down the most flexible product um, in real estate finance. It's just the rates typically are not going to be as competitive as, as a standard mortgage would be. Like right now, well, so it's pretty standard. A HELOC would be prime plus a half. So right now it's 7.45% through like banking channels for the most part. There are some one-off situations where you can get prime or prime plus 0.25. Uh, but you're in and around seven to seven and a half, whereas right now you can still get mortgages in the five and a half to six percent range right so you do need to weigh the costs um and make sure that if if you're racking that thing up right away does it make sense based on the higher rate right some people like it because you have an interest only payment option as well but still if you're paying one and a half percent higher on the rate does it really make sense right your payment could be pretty similar um even if you had some principal factored in yeah one thing to just touch on we we talked about just you know, the, the idea of why somebody might go to a, a, an alternative type lender, equity based private lender, um, mortgage investment corporation, those types of lenders could be a concern for somebody in, in regards to going there from a qualification perspective. So, you know, you don't qualify currently for, you know, increasing your, your mortgage with your current lender or adding a second mortgage or home equity line of credit with your current lender. And now we're going to this lender. And the concern could be is like, well, how am I going to get out of this loan? Like, how am I ultimately going to you know, get back to the bank. And ideally, we would want to have a plan in place to increase income if you're self-employed, showing more income, um, finding a way to ultimately increase more income to get back to the bank at a later date, uh, opposed to just hoping that the rates go back down at some point and we can qualify based on the rates going down. We, we, we want to have, you know, more of a strategic plan in place than just that. So I think it's important to understand that you know, the goal is to ultimately get you out of these loans. Like uh, like when it comes to a, a private lending type institution, we really shouldn't be looking at this as more, really more than a two, two year strategy, um, two to three years at the very most. And, and so understanding the exit strategy is important and building that is it, building that into the strategy is, is always part of our review process. So, um, you know, and, and on the flip side, you know, somebody could look at that as like, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for the purpose of, consolidating, let's say $100,000 of credit cards, what have you, you know, ultimately, how am I going to get out of that? And, and and so sometimes there just might not be an exit strategy other than just chipping away at the debt and paying it off, you know, the old fashioned way, just getting rid of it ultimately from just, you know, changing your lifestyle, changing your budget and ultimately paying it down. And, and the second mortgage could just be, you know, the strategy to just getting, you know, lower interest and actually making that happen. But um, just something to keep in mind, like these aren't, you know, these types of plays aren't meant for, you know, 25 years by any means. Conversation I always have is, is and you mentioned it, Dean, is when, you, when you're taking a private or equity based second mortgage, like these are band aid products, right? These are short term solutions. It's never an effective long term strategy. Uh, but sometimes it makes sense. And, and really, like in the industry today, all the creative and flexible products are, are on the alternative or, or private equity side. I mean, if I could bring one example in. We had a, I had a, a couple come in, husband had lost their job, wife was the only one working, uh, and they had racked up significant amount of credit card and personal line of credit debt. We looked at a second mortgage, and even with the second mortgage, you know, the payments were just too high for them. So we were able to find a product that rolled up all their credit card, personal line of credit debt, and then we capped all the payments that should be made to the mortgage. So it was essentially like a payment holiday for these guys for 12 months for all their unsecured debt so they could focus on getting the husband back to work. They could afford the first mortgage payment that they had. This exit strategy was, well, husband was going to find a new job, get established, get some bankroll behind them, and then come time for renewal of the first mortgage or even a year from now when that second mortgage comes due, we'll refinance, pay out that second mortgage. And in that time, you know, they've obviously been able to reestablish themselves and they got away from um, paying off that um, that other debt just to preserve their cash flow, right? So it, there's there are flexible products out there, and th this was a situation where it absolutely made sense. I think they were sitting at a first rate, first mortgage rate of like two and a half percent. They didn't want to lose that. They had plenty of equity in the home. They didn't want to sell. Um, so it's not always the end of the line when you come to these situations. If you're working with a competent professional, you know they might be able to direct you in the right second mortgage. Yeah, I mean, I think just. Across the board, like we've talked about a lot of different scenarios and, and reasons why it could make sense. Like 
at the end of the day, no one's doing this for fun, right? Like it, like these are situations where someone does need some relief or they do need to access some cash. And obviously right now with rates being higher, it's not ideal to leverage that if you don't need to. But like, you know, we, we mentioned the credit card piece and, you know, like there's, there's a lot of other debts that are dramatically more expensive or quite literally, we've all seen costs go through the roof on everything in addition to your mortgage. And some people might just need to get access to a bit of a buffer to live off to get them through the next however long this takes, hopefully, you know, 12, 18, 24 months, right? If you could supplement your income by $2,000 a month um, for the next year is $24,000. And, you know, would that make a dramatic impact on your life? Most likely it would, right? And does that make a dramatic negative impact on your property? Not really in the grand scheme of things, right? So I think people do need to look at your property like a uh, like an investment, but it it can also provide relief where it makes sense. And we've been lucky enough, you know, for, for most people that have been in the market for, for a little bit, you've probably made some money on your property and, and to access that tax free, obviously there are interest costs, but you have to consider that you can pull that money out tax free as well. Right. So, um, yeah, I think just, just to kind of wrap up my piece is it's always going to make sense. Like no one's going to take on, even if it's a private second mortgage at 14%, right? Like someone's doing that with purpose or doing that with reason uh, because they're cons consolidating something that's, you know, a much higher cost or, or maybe they've racked up credit cards and line of credits to a point where it's killing their credit. Right. And that's a situation where it would it still make sense to, to get some relief, pay off all of your, you know, your unsecured credit products just to free up your credit and get your score back to a point where when it does come time to renew your existing mortgage, uh, you won't have any challenges doing that with a conventional lender. We should certainly mention, too, like especially when it comes to alternative and especially the private side when we're going when we're going to a second mortgage. One piece you can't overlook is the renewal right? And how it operates, what that private lender does on renewal, because everybody's a little bit different. It's not like a bank where you're just going to get guaranteed a rate. Here it is, take it or leave it. Here's your three options. Because you're dealing with a smaller lending institution, there's always the risk that they might say, you know what, we, we want our money back. And then you have to find a replacement mortgage. Or they might say, okay, yeah, we'll renew you, but we're going to charge you a fee to renew this mortgage. And you know, rates may change. So just making sure you're crystal clear or as clear as you can be when you're taking on that second mortgage that you know what's going to happen. Well, as to the best of your knowledge, what will happen when that mortgage comes up for renewal is key because look, there's, there's a lot of different private second lenders out there, some that operate, you know, a little bit more in the gray area than others. So just be careful when you're taking on a second mortgage, make sure your mortgage professional understands the lender that they're working with and understands uh, what the renewal piece might look like. Yeah, great points. I think we hit on some really good stuff here. And just to kind of summarize, you know, the ones that really stood out for me and, and you know, the, the key reasons as to why I would be, you know, looking at a second mortgage, I think the number one thing that steps out, stands out for me, it would be just getting rid of some really high interest uh, credit card debt, like we were talking 19, 22% rates, um, you know, just maximizing the ability of your equity and, and looking at the tax advantages, like Derek mentioned. And one of the ones that I think just stands out by far as a, as a clear winner is just a payment relief program that uh, Tyler was mentioning in regards to, you know, just being able to potentially um, put a loan together that will provide, you know, payment relief for not just, you know, the money you're borrowing, but also all the payments that you have in your life, you know, putting a payment uh, relief reserve program in place makes a ton of sense for a lot of people that are going through tough times right now, whether it's, uh, you know, health issues, you know, employment, career changes, just ultimately just trying to, you know, get some relief from from the variable rate payments that they might uh, have seen increases on. The, the, these are just great reasons to to really consider. Uh, and if you're still unsure, I just always suggest reach out immediately. There, it, you know, there's there's products for, for all shapes and sizes and there's strategies that, that make sense. And there's ways to utilize all of these products for, for very many uh, different strategies that we see uh, day in and day out. And we'd be happy to to illustrate something like this for yourself to at least know where you stand and and ultimately there's there's really nothing that binds you to any of these these types of strategies it's just it's just that it's a strategy it's something to digest and something to consider uh going forward and and ultimately having your back pocket as a plan uh to initiate if you need it so uh yeah great episode uh, looking forward to uh to continuing to 
to release more more stuff like this. This is this uh, came from ultimately just us seeing a lot of requests for this type of strategy, and and we ultimately um, we want to continue to make content in, in that nature where you know we're, it, there's a demand for it. If there's something you want to hear about, something you want to learn about, uh, we're all ears and we're happy to to touch on it. So thanks for listening, and uh, on to the next one.